next, we want to have a look at the inventory data. You can see on the left hand side the different uh, types of uh, measurements the inverters provide. So, starting with the um, energy, um, you'll see that's the cumulative energy production of the three inverters we have installed in our PV system. Um, the first inverter in green, uh, the number one, has a capacity of 7.4 kilowatt peak. Um, uh, Inverter number two and three in, in yellow and in blue curve have a capacity of 19.1 kilowatt peak. So you see over the day, in the beginning uh, until the end of the sunset, you see the energy production um, or the total energy production of each inverter, which helps you to, to see how the energy has increased over the entire day. Normalized energy production is a very important diagram which can be used uh, to analyze the uh, energy production of the different inverters. So what you can see, this is the energy production of each inverter normalized to uh, its capacity. So you see the unit, it's kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak. And using this diagram helps you to identify any issue of the inverters uh, if everything is fine, of course, the bars of the inverters should be on the same level. Um, in case of any technical issue, um, then you have a different height of these bars. Um, so you see in our case, uh, these, both or all three inverters are on the same level with uh, about 4.6 kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak energy uh, generated uh, on the 7th of July. And if you go back in time, you see the inverters are nearly on the same level um, and uh, so the system is running um, without any technical issue regarding the inverters. The AC power diagram uh, shows you the uh, temporal distribution of the power production of uh, each inverter. What you can see here, we have our three inverters in green, yellow and um, blue. And you see the green inverter with a smaller uh, capacity of just 7.4 kilowatt, uh, smaller than the AC power of inverter number two and three with a capacity of 19.1 uh, kilowatt. So you see the um, temporal distribution, uh, what is the outcome of each inverter during the day, and then you can go back in time and have a look at the different conditions, uh, of course, uh, regarding the radiation conditions uh, we have. Um, and you see um, that, for example, the 2nd of June, we have a nearly clear sky day, so perfect or nearly perfect conditions for the uh, for all three inverters. Um, also, this diagram helps you to identify any shading uh, which might occur. Um, so that you can can also analyze uh, the, the effect of shading and the reduction of power production uh, of, of a single inverter. Very helpful is also the normalized AC power diagram. So again, you see the AC power of each inverter uh, now normalized to the maximum capacity. So you see the unit, it's a kilowatt per kilowatt peak. And uh, what you can see is now all curves are on the same uh, level um, due to the normalization of the power output of the uh, inverters. So this helps you to identify any reduction uh, regarding the power generation of the inverters because uh, in, in case of any problem, uh, string malfunction, for example, if one or two strings are missing, um, due to a broken, um, due to a broken cable, then uh, one curve would be uh, below the other curves, and that helps you to identify any issues. In this case, you see everything is fine. Um, we are close to a clear sky day, so very good weather conditions, and we are getting close to the maximum uh, output of one kilowatt per kilowatt peak. That would be the theoretical maximum. Um, under normal conditions, um, you can just achieve, let's say, 0.85 up to 0.9 uh, kilowatt per kilowatt peak uh, installed capacity of the inverter. The AC current diagram shows you the current uh, which is generated by each inverter. 
you see we have in this case three different faces as each inverter feeds in with the, the, to the three different faces we have. Um, so you see more values, but what you can see directly is that uh, all inverters are running fine. We have a smaller current for the first in weight uh, inverter in green, and then uh, the yellow and the blue inverter uh, feed in with a current of uh, 22.3 amperes. So everything is, is fine. Um, so this helps you to understand what is happening on the AC side. Um, regarding the grid connection, uh, what is what is happening on, on this part uh, of the PV system. Finally, we have the AC voltage diagram that shows the voltage on the AC side of our PV system. So what is the voltage um, of our inverters which is fed into the grid or connected to the grid. You see all inverters, all phases are running at 235 volts, so that's the low voltage grid. Um, so they are on the same level. There's no issue regarding the grid. Everything's fine. So this, this diagram helps you also to identify any uh, problems regarding the um, AC part and if there's any technical problem regarding uh, feeding the electricity in to the grid. One additional diagram regarding the grid conditions is the frequency diagram. So what you can see is that is the frequency of the installed inverters uh, on the 2nd of June. You see the inverters are feeding in at uh, nearly 50 Hz. You see this small deviation from this uh, nominal frequency of 50 Hz. Um, on the bottom you see the mean value on this day, so we have uh, 50 Hz, everything's fine. Um, in case of any grid outage, for example, then there would be a drop of the frequency. Um, but you can see on this day there are there, there's no problem regarding the grid frequency. So again, this diagram, um, as well as this AC current voltage diagram, show you what's happening on the AC side and what's about the grid connection of the PV system. On the other hand, we have the DC related diagrams. Uh, let's start with the DC current diagram. What you can see in this diagram is uh, the DC current coming from the module uh, strings and the PV generator connected uh, to the inverters. What you see, we have now six curves uh, as all the inverters have two inputs. So we have two um, different uh, interconnection conditions uh, which are uh, connected to the inverter. Um, you see in this diagram also these uh, six values. We have uh, uh, at noon in this, uh, under this condition, um, 7.7 .7 or 23.2 uh, amperes. Um, this diagram shows you uh, the situation on the DC side. So what's about the number of strings uh, as the current is correlated to the number of strings or the number of modules uh, or module strings which are connected uh, in parallel. Uh, what is very helpful in this case, uh, if you want to use this data to, to do an analysis, it's uh, important that you um, switch to a perfect clear sky day. Uh, of course, this is nearly perfect, but uh, let's switch to the 22nd of April, as this has been a nearly perfect day. Um, so you see that you can see better conditions. We don't have these small ripples due to small clouds. Um, so this, this helps you on the one end to identify any um, problems regarding uh, the, the interconnection, the wiring, the cables, if there's any broken cable in the field. Um, and of course, what you can also do is you can derive the number of strings which are interconnected uh, in parallel as uh, the number of uh, strings in parallel are correlated to this, uh, to this current. And so what you can do is now um, we try to identify, uh, calculate the number of strings which are in, interconnected in, um, in, in parallel. Uh, what you need is, of course, the information 
what are the modules we have. So let's just have a quick look at the technical uh, data. What you see is we have this IBC Solar Polysol 230MS uh, modules. So um, you need the data sheet of these modules. What is the MPP voltage, the MPP current of these uh, modules? And what you also need is, of course, uh, the, the UOC and ISC current and voltage. And then you can use these values and try to figure out what is the number of module strings which are interconnected in pulse. So quickly take a break, um, pause this video and try to use these values. You can see in this video to, to calculate the number of uh, strings which are interconnected in parallel. So what you can see is if you have a look at the data sheets of these uh, IBC Polysol uh, 230 uh, MS modules is that the uh, IMPP is uh, 7.78 amperes. So what you can directly see is that these curves here at the bottom with the current of at uh, let's say 7.6 amperes that correlates to one module string. And then the uh, the string number one of inverter number two and string number one of inverter number three with a current of about 22 amperes that corresponds to three strings which are interconnected uh, in parallel as uh, 22 um, divided by three gives us the IMPP uh, of, the, uh, of the modules. And if you have a look at the technical data, um, so what's about the system configuration? What we can see is everything is fine. You see in virtual number one, we have two uh, inputs, one string uh, input A and one string connected to input B. Everything is fine. And you see in virtual number two and in virtual number three, uh, we have this uh, parallel connected three at input number one and one uh, string connected to input number B. So um, everything's fine, the interconnection corresponds to uh, the measurements. So that's very helpful to, to check the interconnection of uh, the PV system as the current values give you an information about the uh, interconnection parallel and uh, you can derive any deviations from the documentation um, or the technical configuration which is given um, by the EPC. Um, so that's a very helpful diagram to do an analysis of the uh, interconnection of uh, the PV system. The normalized DC current diagram shows you a similar situation. In this case, the uh, current of the module strings is normalized to its IMPP. So in this case, of course, if the technical configuration is correct uh, in this monitoring system, all curves should be uh, on one level and you see that's uh, looking very fine. You see this small deviation of inverter number uh, one, uh, number two, the yellow one. Um, but uh, overall this, the, all curves are on the same level. So that shows you that uh, the technical configuration of the system uh, is correct and the normalization gives you the correct values. The next important diagram on the DC side is the DC voltage diagram. So what you can see is that's the DC voltage of all three inverters. Again, we have the two strings, uh, so the two inputs, uh, two MPP trackers of each inverter. So that's the reason why we got uh, six uh, curves. What you can see is this typical slope of the curve of the DC curve with a higher voltage in the morning, then a decrease uh, near noon and early afternoon, and then the increase of the voltage in, in, in the evening. So you can think about why this is a typical slope of uh, this um, uh, DC voltage curve, um, why this is happening under uh, clear sky weather conditions. What you can do now, of course, is um, again, you can derive the number of uh, modules which are interconnected within one string. Uh, so you can take these values, you should take in the values in the morning. Um, and these are the uh, MPP voltage values without any interference regarding the 
a high module temperature. So um, let's take these values and what you could do is now again uh, try to pause this video, use the data sheet and the UMPP values of our IVC Polysol 230MS modules and try to figure out what is the number of modules which are interconnected in series in one string. So let's have a look. We have an UMPP voltage of 29.6 volts of our modules. And um, if we take uh, the data of in router number one, string number two, so this green dash line, what you can do is you can just click on this on this inverter um, to just see this uh, this curve and get rid of all the other curves. So just take this value. Um, you see we have a voltage of 485 volts. And if we use this value and divide this by 30, we get uh, that we have 16 modules within our string. Um, same situation for the other modules uh, or the, other, the second string, uh, number one of enrich number one. So the straight green line gives us again a uh, number of, of modules in the string, 16. Um, and you can do the same calculation for the other, um, other configuration. You see this uh, values of 730 volts of um, string number one, or input number one of enrichment two and three, um, and also this dashed lines, so uh, input number B of enrichment number two and three uh, with a smaller value. And what you can do is we can quickly cross-check the configuration of our system and see uh, 16 modules are connected in, in series of enrichment number one. And then we have 24 modules uh, which are connected in series of, uh, at input number one of enrichment number two. And again, 21 at 24 modules uh, at of enrichment number three. And input number B are 11 modules, so smaller voltage. So this corresponds to the data we we can we can observe and uh, again this diagram helps us to um, carol calculate uh, the number of modules which are interconnected in each uh, string and we can derive uh, the interconnection of the modules the normalized dc voltage diagram again gives us an overview so the voltage is divided by the UMPP value of the module. And uh, what you can see is our curves are on the same level with a normalized voltage of about one volts per UMPP. So again, everything's fine. Um, the configuration uh, shown in the technical um, system data is, is correct. Uh, so this diagram again helps you to identify on the one hand uh, the interconnection and on the other hand uh, shows you any uh, technical issue in case of problems within a string in this case uh, the voltage or this normalized voltage would drop the temperature diagram shows you the temperature of the inverters so this increase of the um, uh, temperature of this uh, device uh, with the largest volume in this case of about 40 degrees Celsius and then this uh, decrease of the temperature uh, in the afternoon. Um, so this diagram helps you to identify any technical problem regarding the inverter. Uh, if they are getting too warm, so typically the inverters have an up upper limit regarding its uh, device temperature. Um, so you can check if there's any issue with this uh, regarding the DC-AC uh, transformation of the inverter. Um, as the, if the temperature is too large, there might be an issue regarding the, the, the connected DC power, for example. So this diagram helps you um, also to identify technical issues regarding the inverter. The final diagram is the insulation resistance. So in case of any broken cable, the inverters are checking and measuring always uh, the insulation resistance. And if there's a broken cable, then this insulation resistance would uh, drop and the inverter would stop uh, generating or producing AC power. 
um, so that diagram helps you again to um, do a detailed analysis of any malfunction um, if you if you were able to identify the technical problem in case of a broken cable for example so overall these uh, diagrams of the inverter are very helpful for um, the analysis of the PV system regarding the interconnection, so using the DC current or the DC voltage uh, diagram. Um, the AC voltage, AC current diagram helps you to identify problems regarding the inverters itself, um, so particularly the AC power, normalized power, or the normalized energy diagram shows you any, any problems. Um, what you can also do is, of course, regarding the function analysis is that you um, step over to a monthly view. Uh, then you see, um, in this case, again, the inverters are on the same level, uh, more or less. You see smaller values due to bad conditions uh, regarding the weather. So you see everything is fine. The inverters are on the same level. And this, this helps you very much to, to identify any problems. If the inverters deviate uh, from the expected yield production and uh, that gives you a very deep look um, into the PV system and helps you to go very deep into the analysis of the malfunctions.